Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. I'm just finishing up this piano keyboard cutting board and I've made this out of maple, walnut, cherry, and kingwood. This is a very intricate project. It's been on my to-do list for about five years now and I finally have gotten to it. So sit back, relax, and I'm going to show you how I made it. Thanks for tuning in today. So first things first, I started with a drawing uh, from Tommy Hovington's YouTube video on this topic. And I got these dimensions from him. I'm going to show you some dimensions a little bit later. I grabbed a couple pieces of uh, walnut and maple and had to start milling them down to 7 eighths of an inch thick. I love my Grizzly planer. This has a helical head on it and gets really smooth cuts. From there I had to start ripping up the stock. This is just standard milling and just had to make the different pieces. The trick to this is you have to have four different glue ups. So here I'm just milling up the maple. Again these start out at 7 8 by 7 8 and the length of this is roughly 25 inches. Then I needed to cut the length the walnut pieces. Again I'm using my Bosch glide saw. I love this saw. This thing is great, especially since you can butt it right up against the wall. In order to get the thin walnut pieces in between the keys, you need to come up with a method to cut thin strips. And there's lots of different ways to do this. I'm just using a feather board, and actually the back end of a feather board. So I'm setting this for about an eighth of an inch wide. This could be a little tricky, so you got to be careful with this. Do not cut the 1 8 inch from the fence size, otherwise it'll shoot backwards at you. Of course, be careful. Here I am with a different angle cutting the thin strips. And you cut on and there's probably about a dozen of them that you need to do. So this is the dry fit and if you need the dimensions take a screenshot of these next couple portions of this video. Like I said there's four different glue ups that you have to do and I marked them here glue up one two three and four and these are easy to get mixed up so go slowly and you know just take your time these are some of the final dimensions that I did so yeah this is glue up number one again I'm just trying to give you what these sizes are. So if you want to duplicate this you can. So I was using my digital calipers on this, so I got uh, exact dimensions on this. I would recommend on that thin piece on the bottom to make that a little bit thicker. So because there is a little bit of trimming that you do afterwards. Here I'm just lathering up the glue in order for the preparation and gluing up two of the pieces. I got that wide brown piece in the middle so that I don't accidentally glue one of the keyboard pieces to the other keyboard piece. Again, I like numbering these. As you can tell, I'm using Tight Bond 3 on this. It's advertised as being waterproof. I've made many, many cutting boards and 
I've never had any failures with Type Bond 3. Plus, it's supposed to give a lo longer set time. And I've got a lot of pieces here, so I just got to be re real careful. Again, that's why I number them. I like using a lot of glue and I'm just using a little spreader here. This project overall took about six days to make. I like letting my glue dry overnight. I'm not sure of the total time on this, but I would guess I probably had somewhere around six to ten hours making this board. It is a bunch of work, but it's worth it at the end. When I clamp, I usually put packing tape on top of my bar clamps so that I don't get any stains from the bar clamp metal. And then I also put clamps on the top. This is the second glue up. With so many pieces, it is easy to get these pieces mixed up. So you see in the top right hand corner there, I've got my little map plan to make sure that I've got the right pieces in the right spots. Again, this is in preparation to cut these longer pieces into shorter pieces in order to make the keyboard. The other thing I do when I'm gluing up is I usually have a little wet rag to help wipe any excess off. You can see that rag next to the glue bottle. And when I'm saying excess, I mean off my fingers or maybe off the clamps. I usually let the glue squeeze out and let it gel up and then take any of that excess off with a scraper. There I'm putting that spacer in there again so I don't accidentally glue the two sections together. And like I said before, I like letting glue dry overnight. That's why it took a week. When I'm saying six to ten hours, that was total time when I was actually working on it. So now that the keys are all glued up, I'm starting on the back side of the board. And this is a piece of 1x6 cherry. And I'm cutting sections approximately 2 and 1 eighth inch long. Again, I'm using the, um, my chop box. And I see I got a stop block on there to make sure that they're all exactly the same length. So here's the glue up for the cherry on the back side of the board. And I rotated the grain on all these pieces so that it has more of less an uh, oblong shape if you look at the grain real closely. So I was alternating them, kind of like it's a book match. You really can't tell uh, with this particular shot, but I just glued them all up and uh, this only really took a few minutes to do this. So this is the next day and I have to start cutting up the keys. Again, I set this block at about 2 and 1 8 inch thick. This is a thick board. And just again going through the process of cutting these to length. And I made this little glue up fixture in order to help with the glue up. And I had to clean off all the little bit of rough edges from the saw. 
on some sandpaper here and getting these, getting these prepped for gluing. So each piece got a little bit of sanding. The glue up fixture is very handy to make. And here's the, the glue up. You see I cut the, the back of that off a little bit so I can get the clamps on it. These are just a couple pieces of scrap that I had for the glue up fixture. Now you can start seeing how it's coming on, coming along. So just lay them out, spread them out a little bit, flatten them, and then get the glue on there. So again, another part of the process, just take your time. Make sure you've got glue over all surfaces. And then I usually just move the pieces back and forth to make sure I've got glue on all the surfaces. You can see my wet rag there. It's actually an old t-shirt to wipe uh, any excess. So here's what the clamping looks like. And you notice I put a little piece of oak in order to keep these nice and flat. And that oak is wrapped with packing tape so that the piece of oak does not get glued to the keys. I glued up three at a time. Now I'm going over to the planer to make the back of the keyboard, the cherry portion of it, a little thinner. And yes, you can run an end grain cutting board through a planer, but you got to do it in very small passes. And I had about three or four extra pieces of cherry on the end of this because the back end of the board will get chipped out by doing this method, but it saves you a ton of time with sanding. I've done on 60 some boards and I've never had a problem doing this, but I'm only turning the um, the wheel somewhere between a quarter and a half at a time, just taking very light cuts. So here's what it's looking like with the five blocks of the keyboard ready to go. And then I've got the back section of the board also. You gotta make sure you put these in the right spots. And when I did the glue up, I glued two of them in one glue up and three in another glue up. So what I mean by that is I took three blocks and clamped them up and then I took another two blocks and clamped those together. And the reason I did that, when I put them all five against the straight edge, it wasn't perfectly straight. Again, just using a coffee stir here in order to spread the glue. So my philosophy when gluing up is use plenty of glue, make sure all surfaces are covered, and get as many clamps on as you possibly can. And then let it dry overnight. So as you can see, I'm using a combination of bar clamps and quick clamps because I could not get a bar clamp on the top. So now I'm preparing to glue the big block with the little block. Again, doing dry fits is a good thing. If you have to make any adjustments, now's the time to do it. And quite honestly, afterwards, after this was all glued up, I still had to make a, a few cuts on the outside in order to get everything nice and square. Notice the cherry piece at the top of the screen there. 
where the chip out happens when you run the board through the planner. Sometimes I use a sacrificial piece that I glue on, but I had a bunch of these extra pieces of cherry, so I just uh, used that as the sacrificial piece. I ended up cutting about two inches of that end of the board off. So once I ran both of these surfaces across the joiner to get it perfectly smooth, it was time to glue the keyboard section onto the back section. Again, using a lot of glue. I was thinking about using either dowels or biscuits in here, and I decided not to because I think there's plenty of glue surface here, and it was off face grain to face grain versus end grain to end grain. So this only really took a few minutes, and again, this is why it takes several days to get this done, because I made this glue up and then again have to wait overnight until this is nice and set. Good glue surface, make sure everything is covered. You can notice there that piece in the back is longer than the keyboard section and that ended up being the part that's the sacrificial pieces I was pointing out before. So not only was the right side of the board longer for a sacrificial piece, I did have extra keys section and I glue that into the left hand side of that so that I would not chip out the keyboards part. Again going to the planer once it's all glued and you see I'm taking very very light cuts here because I certainly don't want to blow this board up at this point in time. So the trick of using a planer is yes very light cuts. So now it's coming together. I've heard that sometimes a board can blow up and that has just not happened to me. If you look closely you can see the sacrificial piece that I put in on the key section. So I did not blow out the keyboard ends. This is a little bit scary but it all worked out really good. You could also do this if you had a sander, like a wide belt drum sander. There you can see that chip out, there you go. So once I had it nice and flat, then I'm taking it over the table saw and table saw sled. And you can see I'm cutting off the sacrificial piece of the board. So I have to do that on both ends. And I'm just taking a real light pass right there. So here I'm just cutting to final width, just kissing this part of the board. Took maybe, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch off. Now I'm gluing up some king wood onto the ends. I wanted to have some type of a border on each end of it. So this was another glue up. You'll notice the stripes on top of the board there. And that's a mark from the helical head. 
so it's not perfectly smooth on end grain. On face grain, it's perfectly smooth. You can almost put a finish on it right away without any sanding. But I ended up having to take those lines off, and I'll show you that shortly. So in order to get the lines off, I actually went after it with a belt sander and then also with my Festool sander. Here I'm just uh, cleaning off the edges and rounding them a little bit so they're not sharp. I also ended up putting a finger groove in the board's uh, end there. Okay, this is my favorite part of the project. This is what I call the money shop. It took me about an hour to sand this. I started with 40 with 80, 120, and 240. It's super smooth. And the finish that I like using, the initial finish, is solid bowl finish mixed with mineral spirits. All right? And once this is dry, I'm going to follow up with some beeswax and um, mineral oil. So I do a 50 50 mix. You can see why I like this so much. This is, like I said, this is what I call the money shot. Because this really makes the grain pop. And you know, you know you're coming down the home stretch when you, uh, when you see this. Look at that grain. So as you can tell, I used maple, walnut, this is cherry, and this is kingwood. Now... If I make another one of these, I'm going to do something different with the keys. So for instance, this is one section right here. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 pieces right here. And instead what I would do is make this one solid piece, this one solid piece, and this one solid piece. And then a whole bunch of them. Uh, like that. So I would I would glue them up like that instead of having uh, all these uh, smaller pieces in there. Now I don't know if it's going to work on this particular board, but typically this might take a little bit longer on this one. Typically when you do a cutting board, the the finish that you put on the other side will weep right through. Uh, but usually my boards are about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half thick. Since this is two inches thick, it, it might just have taken a little bit longer, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this finish on now. So what I'm going to do is let this dry. I'm going to just let this keep soaking in, and I'm going to let it dry. And like I said, I'm going to then put uh, beeswax and mineral oil finish on top. Okay. So this section is two days later. I let that thoroughly dry. I used a soup can and some boiling water there. And I mixed mineral oil and beeswax in that can and made that all so it's liquidy. Then I poured that and spread that all through the, uh, the board, making a nice thick coating. This finish I got from the Wood Whisperer. And this is how he finishes his boards. Some people are concerned about using mineral spirits on a board, but it's perfectly okay because it evaporates off. So for the 60 plus boards that I've done, I've used this finish and it just comes out looking great. It's a nice shine to it. And I've not had a problem with anybody. And it protects the board very well also. So as always, thanks for tuning in today. I really appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. This is a long video, and I hope you stayed to the end here. And hey, you know the drill. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. And please check out some of my other videos. I've got flat work projects, turning projects, and several restoration videos. And always remember, just like Norm Abrams says, wear your safety glasses. Woodworking can be tons of fun, but it can be dangerous. So until next time, I'll see you on another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Bye-bye.